What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm showing you guys a deck that I haven't had here on the channel in a very very long time. I think I did it like a few years ago and that is Counter Fairy. And I thought hey a lot of people who are returning to the game, just starting the game or want to play something new could try out Counter Fairy in today's format. Now today's deck profile is going to be more of a competitively viable build and what I mean by that is the card choices in there are going to be chosen so that you guys can go to a locals play against some of the meta and be able to compete against today's meta. So welcome to how to play Counter Fairy in 2022. I hope you guys do enjoy the video and if you do make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content. The goal for 2022 it's going to be a big one, but it's 10,000. I think we can make it happen. I believe in every single one of you. Thank you guys all for watching. And with that, on to the video. Okay, so to get started off with the deck here, this is a deck that I haven't done in so long, and I had a lot of fun building it. I know it's a little bit of a different take on how people usually pick counter fairies, but I think if you want to play it competitively and you want to go to a locals and win a locals and whatnot, I think this is the most viable way to do it. Also, this deck relatively is pretty budget, to be honest with you. So if you wanted to play this, wanted to go to a locals, just starting out with Yu-Gi-Oh, this might be something you want to consider. It's pretty fun and pretty cool. I'm not going to lie to you. Anyway, so we're going to start off with Triple Bountiful Artemis. Of course, this is pretty much your best normal summon in the deck. Each time you activate a counter trap, you get to draw a free card. So this card is pretty cool in that sense. Triple Guiding Ariadne. This card is very, very important. The reason for that is because essentially you don't have to pay cost for your counter traps. So Solemns, you don't have to pay life points. Your ultimate providence, you don't have to discard cards. Art Ariadne is very important for this deck because it makes it so that you can activate all these broken trap cards without having to pay their cost. So that's really important. Then we are playing a little bit of a Dogmatica package. And I think it's very, very important to play this package because you don't need your extra deck at all. And the Dogmatica package gets you free punishment. And punishment is just free disruptions. So we're playing double Ecclesia. Ecclesia is still a pretty good normal summon as well. If you don't get into your Artemis, Ecclesia is you're still pretty it's still a pretty good normal summon, I would say. So that's why you're playing double of this and then one floor to lease. Just a little bit more disruption. Then you're playing triple the dear servant, of course. This card nets you so much advantage because being able to send a Titanic Lad, search an Ecclesia, summon an Ecclesia, get to your punishment, and then at the end phase, search a Floor de Lis. Like, that's so crazy in my opinion. So, that's why Triple Nadir is very important in this deck. It makes it so that, yes, you're playing a Counter Trap deck. However, you can still have other plays if you don't draw into your counter traps right away so it's kind of not like a one-minded focus deck it's really cool because you still have that as your win con but now you also have a little bit of a way to gain advantage in this deck right as well as your bountiful artemis just drawing you a bunch of cards every time you activate a counter trap right so you have a lot of advantage in this deck so you're playing also triple extravagance speaking of advantage you're draw drawing more cards with extravagance and you have double pot of duality now you're not really special summoning in this deck at all outside of maybe the fleur de lis but again you're doing this mostly on your opponent's turn anyways so with that being the case duality is safe it gets you to any one card you need it's a little bit cooler than extrav in a sense where okay extrav is really important in this deck because you don't need your extra deck it's better than prosperity because you're getting two cards rather than just one card duality is really good in this deck because it's like okay if i already have a strike in my hand instead of drawing to another strike i can look at my deck and be like all right i need this card because now my combo is for sure gonna go off or i need this card because also duality gets you into like your ariadne and stuff like that as well so that's why this is really really important double duality and then one card of demise card of demise doesn't work with extravagance because extravagance doesn't let you draw after you use extravagance however there's a lot of times where you just have no cards in hand or you have one card in hand and it's a trap card you can set it activate your card of demise draw three this card's insanely powerful too powerful not to play okay i know it conflicts with extrav but it's just way too powerful not to play also there's not going to be a lot of times where you're drawing extrav plus your card of demise anyways so yeah I, you you should be playing this for sure then for the traps we're playing a ton of traps as you guys can see double storming mirror force just a little bit of battle protection i like this card now i didn't want to actually play this card at three but i decided to play it at two for something else that i'll show you guys in a minute but yeah we're playing double storming mirror force triple imperm imperm is one of the best trap cards in the game yes it's not a counter trap but it is one of the best trap cards in the game as well as triple punishment again you're not going into your extra deck so that's why you want to be playing triple punishment you're gonna it's just another form of disruption for you Triple goes to match. Now, the nice thing about goes to match in this deck is goes to match beats a lot of matchups. However, it's also really cool because your Dogmatica monsters are light, but so are your counter fairies. So if you wanted to, you can play both. You can have your Bountiful Artemis on the board, but you can also have Ecclesia on the board. So it's really cool in that sense. I really like goes to match. Then for the counter traps, we're playing 11. We're playing two Ultimate Providence, 
triple solemn strike triple solemn judgment as well as triple solemn warning just the best counter traps you could be playing stuff like broken land and whatnot but keep in mind that those other counter traps don't really have costs and you really want to take advantage of ariadne making it so that you don't have to pay a cost right solemn warning pretty much stops any normal summon judgment stops everything essentially like especially when a lot of decks are going to be siding in like twisters lightning storms etc etc you need the judgments to stop that even in the main deck a lot of people are playing that as well so you need the judgments for that triple solemn strike solemn strike is really good going first and going second as well now this is the card that i was thinking i was like okay i want to play a third mirror force but i was like you know what i think an ultimate providence is really really powerful because it's pretty much an omni negate especially with the ariadne it's literally an omni negate for no cost right so that's why i decided to play this also again it synergizes with the artemis because you get to draw a card when you activate this you could actually play this is a fun fact but negate attack is a counter trap so if you wanted to play another kind of battle protection you could play negate attack because it ends the battle phase but it's also a counter trap so you'll also get the draw of artemis i tried to do it and i tested it it's kind of fun you guys can test it yourself but the problem with it is it doesn't get you anywhere because even if you negate attack if your opponent sets up their board Board, then it doesn't really matter you don't really have a lot of board breakers in this deck outside of again like the punishment or or, or like you know your strike can break boards as well right goes a match you can argue as well right but the thing is with something like storming is if your opponent makes a board and the attack and you storming everything goes back and you're pretty much resetting the game state that's why i like the storming mirror force more than the negate attack Although negate attack does have its applications just because of it being a counter trap. So yeah, that's it. 40 card main deck. I think this main deck is perfect. I wouldn't change anything from it. I tried a bunch of different like ways to play it. This was the best variant. Again, the only thing I could, you, I could see being changed is cutting one Providence for the third Stormy Mirror Force and then playing 10 counter traps. But I think 11 is just a perfectly fine number. So again, that's the only thing that I could see kind of changed. Otherwise, I think it's perfect. I really, really like this deck. Then for the extra deck, it's literally all just extrav targets and Waking the Dragon target. So as you guys can see, I put Waking the Dragon in the side deck. This card you 100% want to put into your side deck if you're playing this deck. I'm not showing you guys the rest of the side deck, but I think this card is really important to play because you pretty much summon boss monsters that your opponent can't out and it gives you another win condition so that's why i really like waking the dragon so your extra deck is essentially extrav targets but punishment targets or waking the dragon targets so we're of course playing double titanic clad double because of extrav so we want to play double because with the deer it pretty much gets you to one well, you want to send one of these especially on your first turn and then you just kind of go off from there because you're going to get so much advantage so yeah double titanic cloud for that triple entis entis of course is your pops especially with punishment it's how you break boards it's how you stop your opponent from making boards this card's really good one omega as well as double win pegasus adding mister again these are just punishments things that do stuff in the graveyard for you so that's that's they're just more targets same with fairy it's not the target now you guys might be wondering why fairy well fairy when it's sent to the graveyard gets you lets you draw one and put one back into your deck so it's really good because it's kind of fixes your hand sometimes if you need the extra card um, and if you draw that card and you don't need it you can just put it back anyways right it, it makes it better so you're like okay well i'm not going to top deck this next turn so fairy is really good it kind of fixes hands then you're playing triple ultimate falcon one full armor master as well as one exterior these are just waking the dragon targets probably just some of the best waking the dragon crowd targets you can argue you can play macaba you can argue you can play totally awesome literally whatever you guys have available if you guys don't have these it's okay i want to make this like very accessible to people especially people who are just starting to play or people who just want to try this deck out you don't have to force yourself to go buy these cards go get whatever waking the dragon targets you think are relevant totally totally awesome is really good macaba like i said earlier is really good uh you have last warrior from a different time i can't remember the name exactly but of any target you guys can find is really really good ultimate falcon i just picked and so did full armor master because they're unaffected by other card effects so a lot of the time if you summon these opponents don't really have outs to them unless they attack over them but again ultimate falcon's 3500 and full armor is 3000 so it's also really hard to attack over these as well so that's why i'm playing these two and then exterior is just really good because exterior you just summon this it's pretty much just an omni negate for a lot of things right so exterior is good here as well but yeah all I wanted to say was I think this deck is really, really fun. I don't think it's going to like top YCS, but if you guys wanted to try a counter fairy build, I think this is the way to go about it. And again, in the side deck, I don't, you guys want to side for your own locals because sometimes people's locals like to play more back row. Sometimes they like to play more combo. So you guys want to side for your own locals, but I do 100% recommend triple waking the dragon because everyone is going to be siding back row hate against you. And if they get rid of that waking the dragon, then boom, you get a free monster on the board. Your opponent is probably not going to be able to out it and you're just going to be winning from there. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you guys have any suggestions, any opinions, any thoughts, let me know in the comment section down below. I love when I hear what you guys have to say. That's how we get better. And that's the whole point of this channel is the whole Spanko community getting better together, right? And so I appreciate every single one of you guys for watching. If you guys haven't already, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you guys did enjoy. And with that, I, I really got nothing left to say. So Spanko, sign and out. Peace.